this week on Scam School, it's the most suggested trick and a lesson in storytelling. It'll make sense. All right, toast me, Matthew. Woo, woo. Get this, we shot the pilot for Scam School in 2007. This is the 10th anniversary year of me working on this show. And in all that time, my favorite moments are ones just like this, when we finish a shoot and somebody says, can I show you a trick? And they're clearly not caring <laughs> about whether or not I know how it's done or not. Yes, the answer is always yes. A good magician always wants to hear the other person's stuff because something magical happens when you see something familiar in a brand new light. You seem to pinky promise on this. Like you're gonna perform for me. Yes. Okay, well do your best Brian Brushwood impression and take it away, sir. Okay, uh, I want you to take the deck and I want you to help me out. I want you to go through it and I want you to find the two black aces, put them face up right in the middle. What, like this? Yep, that's perfect. And... They look like sentinels. They look like um, Gamorrean guards <laughs> right outside of Jabba the Hutt's palace. That's, that's what they look like. amazing, we'll go with that. Okay, these are Gamorrean guards outside of Jabba's palace. <laughs> well, that was fast. All right, great. There's a lot of bad characters in Jabba's palace. Yes, okay. And I want you to pick one. I've got a whole bunch of them right here. You figure them oh, out. No. Oh, that one? Oh, I got the okay. worst of all of them. Do you want to know who it is? I don't want to Can I know. tell you? No, but what you can do is you can teach the guards. You can just okay. put them down, cross the two guards. It's salacious crumb. <laughs> And all right, all right. What, what has happened is now they are going to keep an eye on that bad character. Above all else, yeah. should anything bad happen. Yeah, so the Gamorrean guards have salacious crumb. Exactly. Yeah, got them one by each ear. They're pulling. <laughs> and, it's, and they pull hard enough that his laughs start to sound like cries, and then they laugh. Yes. Okay. So now we're going to pick him up. Get him back in with What do you do else? to get in trouble with the Gamorrean guards to begin with? Uh, I mean, what can't you do to get in trouble with them? So he laughed too hard at one of their snorts. You know, one of them got snorting, and then he thought he was mocking the other one's snorts. Fantastic, got it. absolutely. But he's back in the palace. He is, so now what we have is we have everyone back in. Yeah. Bunch of bad characters. Yeah. We've got the, the one keeping an eye on. Yeah. In there somewhere. We've got a guard on the front. Guard on the back. Yep, 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 yep. Now we need some drama. I don't know, let's say some re religious zealot uh, 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 with psycho powers frees a bunch of his friends. That's uh. fantastic. He frees the friends, chaos ensues, yeah. and everyone escapes. Yes. This is everyone has escaped. Or, or they died. But the guards, they caught someone. What? No! <laughs> they got salacious crumb! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is great. Here's what was so much fun for me. I know in theory the principles that you're doing, but because I am a good watcher of you magic, are a good watcher. I listen to the story and I look you in the eyes. That is the mark of a courteous professional, is when somebody wants to do magic to you, it is not a challenge, and it should not intimidate you. It should be a moment of delight. And to me, I'm busy thinking like, oh, what other Jabba's Palace things can I make? Uh, should I make a reference to uh, the Shape It Up and Working Out song that got cut from the re-release? Whatever. I know you controlled a thing in a thing, yep. and I know that when you, uh, whenever you throw cards out, the top and bottom go out, Outside of that, I really did not follow the mechanics that took us here. Can, okay. can you walk me through this? Uh, I can if you buy me a beer. Okay, fine. <laughs> Hoisted and by my own it. petard. <laughs> and coming up next is lot 87-43-2, a premium domain from domain.com. You can get a .com or a .net with uh, unparalleled... Hey! Oh. Am I on the air? Uh, we've got a caller. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, hey, it's Brian from Austin, Texas. Hi, how, Brian. How, how are you? Oh, I'm, I'm good. Are you, are you uh, looking to buy a doctor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so my grandma, she has got. She used to have the Flitterbug phone, but then we got a motor phone or blazer, mm -hmm. and the motor, motor phone or blazer is real thin, and uh, it looks super stylish. She loves it. So you want to make a website for uh, her motor phone or blazer? Web website. You no. want to make a website, get no, a domain, get a nice No, she's got the nice motor phone or blazer, and she looks super fashionable, and we, we got a bedazzler on it. It looks super ju bejeweled. So you want to take photos and make a like a portfolio for your grandmother with, with her cell phone? That's a great idea for our website. No, Get uh, premium domains. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Are you trying to upsell me on a domain from domain.com? You're going to tell me that they're fast, easy, reliable. You get a 99.9% .9 uptime, and that you could get 15% off or use promo code scam school at checkout? That's exactly the idea of this commercial. Uh, well, no, no. I'm talking about the motor phone or blazer. Oh. It's a thin phone. Now, since you're a pro, 
I can probably just show you one thing. A legend, bro. And the rest you can just improvise, improve upon, or repeat as I did. Okay, well let, let me tell you the parts that, that I, I grok okay. are, you want two identical cards of some variety. Correct. And what I love most about this is that you kept asking me, what do these represent? They should be X, Y, or Z. You know, like, right. they're sentinels, they're guards at the gates, uh, they're Gamorian guards. And all of a sudden, we felt mutually between us the tickling of the beginning of a story <laughs> that we all of a sudden, this is more than a card trick. We're playing D&D together, we right? Are. We're and then playing meanwhile, you're showing me all these cards. You're like, you know, here's Lando, but we don't know he's Lando yet. Uh, here's that Twilight who gets eaten up. Here's Max Rebo and his band. All of a sudden, the more content text you gave, the more I cared less about the card trick, but the more fun the whole thing became for me, right? Yeah. Did I pick one face up or you face down? You picked one face down, Okay. and then I had you place it on the two aces. Okay, so you have a six okay. here, and so we'll say it's uh, the ranker. Oh! Right? Oh, no, 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 the ranker owner, the ranker there master. You go, the, the dude ranker crying master. at the end. Yes. Okay, got it, got ranker it. Master. All right, so, so now, now we have our story. Once you have this structure, it's so easy to make up dumb jokes and tell stories that are coming off the top of your head. Absolutely. And, and which makes it all the easier for me to not notice what you did, but not this time. You're going to show me exactly Absolutely. what you did. So then what you want to do is through whatever techniques you have, I don't have a lot, Right. you want to keep that card on the bottom. I'm going to show you what I would do. Okay. And then I, because I think whatever it is you were doing, I liked more. Okay. So I grabbed it, I just put it on the bottom, and we've taught before how if you overhand shuffle yep. by just keeping your hand on there, you can shuffle like this all day long and keep uh, the ranker master at the bottom. But you did something different. What did you so do? So actually, I did that. I did two things. I scooped it up, Yep. Uh, and then I did a false cut. And this is when I practiced a little bit. And I like that false cut. Wow. It's right there on the bottom. OK, where can we go to learn that false cut? Can you, can you teach me that false cut? Uh, Miss Mag uh, can teach it. I think it's Miss Mag 82. I okay, learned it from him. Uh, it's, I think it's called a triple swing cut. Triple swing cut. I'll bet you can also find it from uh, my good friend Assad over at 52 Cards Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you're doing just some kind of fancy cut that implies that stuff's all mixed up. Right. Uh, and then you can work in shuffling into the story. And right there, I did the move you just showed me very yep. sloppily. Yep. Which, by the way, is actually a positive. It is. Because when people see stuff like that, everywhere. they don't think, this guy is a sharp with cards. So still on the bottom. OK. And then you just sort of square them up. The important step, this is the trick. You want to have that bottom one offset. Uh, what I was doing offset. is I was saying there's one on the bottom, uh, oh. about a quarter, yeah, oh, about maybe a little more. Great. So, so you say there's one on top, one on the bottom. This is the heart of good magic: is you are using the story as a method to accomplish the objective. Because your objective is, I want to be able to have the pads of my fingers Absolutely. on both of these cards. Yes. And the way I'm getting there is by explaining all of Java's palace is guarded by this guy on top and this guy on bottom. Absolutely. And then I'm assuming what comes next is you're going to get enough of the pads of your fingers on both of these cards. As you toss everything over, you just keep your pads Absolutely. on there. And everyone died. Everyone Remember, died. Everybody died. There's a big <laughs> space battle. And only the Gamora guards had yeah, the Ranker Master. <laughs> dude, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that, dude. That's You're great. Welcome. You ever notice how sometimes you'll watch a Scam School episode, and the moment you see the trick, you think, holy cow, that's incredible. Then you find out how it's done, and then you think, well, it can't be that good. That's something scientists call the curse of knowledge, and it keeps us from being able to understand what things look like from somebody's point of view who doesn't know what you know. The curse of knowledge is what kept me from thinking this was a good trick for years and years, but this was a fantastic lesson in storytelling and making everything fun and exciting and new again. If you had any insights, hit me up at Twitter at twitter.com slash wood. There is no C in Schwood, and of course you gotta subscribe to The Modern Rogue. Jason Murphy and I are kicking all the asses and taking all the names. Here's what it looks like. Okay, so let's light things on fire. I'm inordinately nervous about this. Because that's going to be your shadows. That's good. You forgot to shout like, I'm a big dumb asshole. <laughs> no, sorry, no, go ahead. <laughs> Alright, so that you can send the rest over. Oops, I screwed it up. <laughs> Doing it left-handed. There we go. Uh, Alright. This week on Scam School, it's the most success 